Hey guys, MVC here for the Scampro Gaming Town for another video review. This time it's the Asus Republic of Gamers Seeker, an ambidextrous gaming mouse with outside buttons and therefore definitely geared toward the very specific individual, but is therefore suited for both left and right handed usage. And not everyone requires the use of a side button. I, however, do. I actually use it for the most useless thing ever, which is weapon switching to melee. Uh, I don't even use it for push to talk or any macros like that, but if you're an MMO player or maybe, maybe, uh, uh, I don't know what else you would need the buttons for then maybe steer clear but I know this definitely market out there for this kind of product and particularly at the price point as well it features the Pixar 3310 optical sensor so it should be very high performing if the Gladius is anything to go by that we reviewed early with the 3988 sensor this essentially is lighter smaller and uh, yeah could satisfy it hell of a lot of people so stick with it we've also been sent the whetstone mouse pad to check out it seems to me like a cloth and plastic hybrid one of the plastic pads i've ever had the pleasure of using it's back in the box now because i'm recording this intro afterwards but we're going to look into this as well and i give my thoughts on it albeit not a full review because it's a mouse pad so yeah enjoy the video guys overview i look at software i look at the sensor implementation in terms of acceleration there shouldn't be any uh, look at the mouse button implementation and then thoughts on day-to-day -day usage and gameplay so enjoy the video stick with it and we'll catch you in for final thoughts the Asus Republic of Gamers Seeker is a ambidextrous shaped mouse without side buttons and therefore definitely geared toward the certain type of gamer. It comes in at a length of 115mm, a width of 62mm and a height of 39mm, weighing in at 117 grams with the rubber cable that ends in a gold USB connection. The mouse is powered by the Pixar 3310 optical gaming sensor with DPI of up to 5000, very high performing and we have independent mouse 1 and 2 buttons of the mouse body which give you a good crisp click no matter where you push down. Great because the mouse is very comfortable as both a claw, palm and fingertip user. So. A lot of people are going to be pushing down in different places but underneath those buttons we also find the easy swap sockets making a return from the gladius so if you want to experiment with different feeling on runs you can check out the compatible switches in the faq but you will have to buy them separately now underneath the mouse we find teflon feet and the coating of the mouse is a special steel gray coating designed to minimize sweat and stickiness with as always the typical asus rog intricate mayan stenciled markings on the side also found on the whetstone pad that we've got here too, which might I add is extremely fast, if not one of the fastest mouse pads on the market. And to be honest, it's actually quite impressive, but I'll be on the small side. So before we jump into the juicy performance and my thoughts on gameplay with the Seeker, let me first show you the software bundled with the mouse and what you're getting for your money in terms of customization. Although I say bundled, you will have to visit the Asus website to download it, but I'd recommend you do that anyway, just so you're up to date from the get-go. And then periodically, just check for updates to make sure you get any firmware drops. That way you don't run into any issues that may have already been ironed out or will be ironed out in future if they happen to crop up. But we're running 1.03 on the firmware. We did have to upgrade this when we installed software version 1.25 i believe the retail on launch software was 1.2 but we can also choose our language launch at startup windows startup that is and visit the rog website facebook and faq if we need it but on the left hand side here we've got our different profiles the software itself looks very familiar to the gladius setup actually albeit with less buttons on the mouse and a few less features as well as it does feature a slightly different sensor but we've got our profiles on pc we can create as many as we want I only want one, obviously, as I don't really need to create any more. Although, saying that, maybe I do, which we'll get into in a minute. And obviously, you can drag one to the mouse if you want to, which we'll do now. Uh, you're going to want to do that whenever you make changes because they are independent of each other. So if I was to click this, I'd edit this one. If I click this, I edit this one. But it can be great if you travel to an event or a tournament. Sometimes they don't allow you to install your software onto the PCs. So being able to take your tournament settings on the mouse with you makes it a tournament grade mouse in that effect. Really, you're going to have no issues with this at events. On top of that, if you use multiple PCs as well, sometimes you just can't be bothered to install software in other devices. This gets you covered there too. But in reference to maybe having to create multiple profiles here there is no dpi switch on the mouse or profile switch 
for that matter. So you will every single time have to come into the software to change your DPI, which goes all the way up to 5,000 in increments of 50, all of which are native and responsive. But because there is no button here, you will have to come into the software to change it. And adjusting this slider or typing your DPI can be very frustrating. So actually you might want to create different profiles just so you can switch to it whenever you want to. But I would have liked to have seen a button on top of the mouse in that respect. But going back to buttons just quickly, on here you can reassign everything on the mouse, mouse function, window shortcut, multimedia, macro, which we'll get to, and keyboard function. If we click window shortcut, you got your drop down and keyboard function, we just hit a button on our keyboard. But because of the lack of buttons on this mouse, I feel like they've just added this for the sake of adding it. You're not really going to be using it. Moving back to performance, here we've got acceleration and deceleration. Ignore deceleration, but the fact we have the 3310 optical sensor would assume there is no inherent acceleration present. We'll demonstrate that in a minute and test for it. So if you want to add your preferred amount of acceleration, you're going to be able to do it up here, which is great, all the way up to two times the amount. So uh, very happy that Aces have actually included an acceleration slider inside of the software, particularly if you're playing multiple different games, the acceleration scale often differs. So utilizing your software, particularly saving the profile onto the mouse, means you're going to have no issues there whatsoever. And finally, obviously at the bottom right here, polling rate, 125 being 8 millisecond response time, 250 being 4, 500 being 2, and 1000, the one you should use being 1. And our final tab here, lighting, breathing, steady, and an option to turn off the light if you want. Bright is extremely bright. I actually run it on dim. I was messing around earlier on. Let's just uh, do not show this message again. And with that, let's go ahead and drag it to the mouse. This should update the lighting as you can see there. Again, a bit emphasized or overemphasized on the webcam pointing at my whetstone mouse pad, but you get the picture. And to be honest, if you're only going to utilize one profile, you might as well just edit the one on the mouse. But again, given the fact there is no dedicated DPI or profile button, again, I'm very disappointed in that. Maybe it was a weight decision, uh, then you know you will have to come back in every time. But aside from that, uh, for a three button mouse, it has everything you could want. And again, not a lot of people put an acceleration slider into the into their software. I think this could be even developed further to add more intricate acceleration uh, sort of settings. But for what it's worth, great, particularly at the price point, no complaints. So yeah, let's jump into some mass acceleration tests. So our first port of call to test in the ASUS ROG Seeker mouse is to demonstrate a lack of mouse acceleration inherent to the 3310 optical sensor inside. Now this sensor is featured in a lot of top gaming mice on the market. The first time we've seen ASUS put it into an ROG branded mouse. The Gladius featured the 3988, but this one specifically has been featured in the Renex Avian Neo 7000 and most recently reviewed on the channel, the SteelSeries rival White. It's highly regarded amongst the gaming community, but a lack of mouse acceleration will mean that if you move your mouse from point A to B on the mouse pad, it doesn't matter how slow or how fast you reach your destination on the pad, you'll always travel the same amount in game. And when I say destination on the pad, what I'm referring to there is your flick shots, because you might do it instinctively, but if you flick your mouse X amount of distance on the pad, you're intending for it to go X amount of distance in game. And if you can train up that muscle memory, that's great. But on top of that, there's no inherent positive or negative acceleration to the sensor. It means you can go and add your preferred amount afterwards because acceleration is not a bad thing, it just needs to be able to be controlled. So hopefully the implementation here is great, but what I want to point out is that this mouse pad is extremely thin, so with that said I'm going to have to put a mouse pad underneath this, so when I travel to the end of it we actually stop tracking, which we do, but if I come to the end and push down just a tad, we actually hit the mouse pad and it tracks there. But before we get to that, this mouse pad is extremely loud, so if you're a streamer or a broadcaster or a commentator, you might want to steer clear of the whetstone, but it's extremely quick, it's not sensitive on my wrist, and probably one of the fastest mouse pads I've ever used, albeit on the smaller side. But give me a second while we get a pad underneath this. Okay, so we've got a plain black thick mouse pad underneath the Asus ROG whetstone pad. Um, essentially, we're going to align ourselves up with a point on the wall at the edge of the whetstone pad and move it from the left to the right until it stops tracking, which is about at this point right here. We're going to reset and this time do it very quick and hopefully, if there's no acceleration, we won't end up too far and we won't end up too slow, but we'll end up about in the same place taking into account some small degree of human error. So, again about in the same place, a little bit further, but I think I actually went down on my mouse pad. And we're going to do it one more time. 
And again, about in the same place. Again, extremely loud mouse pad. But what we can essentially assume there is that there's no acceleration present. Great implementation in that respect. And with that said, let's go ahead and just jump into a quick mouse button debounce test. So my final test before jumping into thoughts on gameplay performance with the ROG Seeker is to have a look at the implementation of the mouse buttons because very specifically I have noticed an issue when it comes to variable jumps in Shoot Mania and utilizing the technique called mini jumping which essentially is to rapidly tap the mouse 2 button to do lots and lots and lots and lots of mini jumps. Now we also want to kind of demonstrate that you can still full height rocket jump with this mouse in Quake Light. There are no issues with mouse button debounce times and a higher debounce time would usually suggest and there are mice that have this issue that if you press mouse 1 to fire and mouse 2 to jump and then both together to do a full height rocket jump in Quake Live you're going to jump slightly after you shoot or shoot slightly after you jump so you won't get the full height because one is registered slightly later. Uh, in Quake Live you will be happy to report that there is no issues with that whatsoever. Running around on campgrounds and pretty much any map full height rocket jumps from the red armor to bridge on um, blood run from the lower yellow armor up to shotgun no problems whatsoever. It's a great implementation and using the mouse normally it's fine fine in any game you're not going to notice a problem but what I did find is that if I take my Death Valley Chroma for a moment now the way I mini jump on this and demonstrate it in other reviews is to hold it on one hand and spam the button as you can see lots and lots of mini jumps and even when I'm using one hand what I'll do is I'll lift my hand up spam it and then click because clicking normally is very unreliable sometimes I'm a little bit too slow doing it this way so it's better to spam the button and then sprint now, the problem with the Seeker is that if you rapidly spam the button like this, it doesn't always activate because you need to put down a little bit more force for it to actually activate. And you can see when it activates, it's a pretty small jump. But because I can't just tap it like this and when I've got it in one hand, I can't just do that. I don't get the jump that I want. But using it normally, I get all the jumps off. But again, it's just not as not as low as I'd like. So I do feel like there's a bit of a flaw, whether it's due to the switch inside and whether swapping it out to a different on one would correct it or not. I'm not sure. Whether it's due to the release time that could otherwise be fixed in firmware, again, I'm not sure. But that's not to say that the mouse buttons don't feel tactile and responsive. They definitely do. It's just it requires that little bit more thought or effort to actually push down the button and not just tap it. Now, Nine times out of ten, wow, that was a small jump, which makes me wonder whether... It seems there's actually a specific point, <laughs> learning as we go, on this mouse, where if you press it right there, I wonder if it's the same... At least I found it on the right mouse button where you can actually mini jump, funnily enough. So this may actually just be a build issue. Hmm. Interesting. Well, with that in mind, let's go ahead and uh, jump into final thoughts and gameplay performance. So on to final thoughts then for the Asus ROG Seeker and Whetstone mouse pad. Well... Where to start? Now we're going to mix gameplay and thoughts on day-to-day -day usage in with this section because my videos are getting really, really long recently. So hopefully all the information you appreciate and we can start to condense this down a little bit moving forward. But the issues that I ran into with Shoot Mania and it not clicking when I spam down the button like that, uh, I didn't really notice day-to-day -day usage. Quake Live, CS, uh, TF2, I always hit my shots when I wanted to hit my shots. I never accidentally didn't click and the issue wasn't prevalent but that doesn't discount the fact that the issue is there so whether it's limited to the batch my specific mouse or it could be fixed in firmware or maybe it just can't be fixed at all it it's something you still need to consider in your purchase now obviously you get your warranty with it and if you run into that issue yeah you could just return it and that that's that but I just want to point out that the issue is there for you, even though I didn't experience it when it came to actual gaming outside of Shoot Mania. So tracking people in TF2 and Counter-Strike, whether it's a pistol round on Counter-Strike or I'm using something like the 
the Tech 9 or even the P250 on a pistol round, or if I'm tracking someone as the scout in TF2, if they're rocket jumping and air strafing through the air, or it's just the scout continually strafing like that. And I've been playing a lot of TF2 recently, that's why we've kind of shifted away from, from the, the Quake 3 aim map test. But they kind of both serve the same purpose, and it demonstrates the 3 3 10 implementation is perfect. Now, yeah, I'm a little bit confused as to why there isn't the 3988 from the Gladius, because that was a great implementation, and a lot of people confuse the 3988 as being delayed when in actual fact it just runs 50 dpi faster so you're probably using a different dpi than what you're used to if you haven't actually physically measured it out at least in the recent products like the gladius and the chroma that i reviewed it's been fine maybe it's cost reasons but irrelevant i think because the 3v10 in the seeker performed admirably and there's nothing I'd, ra I, I'd actually want to see improve beyond, obviously, more options, maybe a DPI switch on top of the mouse so I can change it on the fly when I'm playing certain games or I'm in certain situations. But in terms of the buttons, hitting people as they cross out from doors on Dust 2, uh, perfectly fine. Uh, hitting those one taps again, easy. Uh, I didn't encounter any issues. So, generally speaking, it is a great product. It's just... The mouse buttons, whilst not a deal breaker in every case, could potentially be. And that's the reason why I find it very difficult to actually recommend to you, because it's not perfect. So I'm not going to recommend it, but I'm not going to not recommend it, because for a lot of you out there it might be okay. So I'm going to just stay neutral, very close to, to being perfect, is the, is the Seeker, assuming you don't need side buttons anyway. It's just... I don't know. I want to think it's limited to my product, but yeah, just make sure you keep your warranty information if you do pick it up, just in case. Now, in terms of the the Seeker mouse pad, uh, the well, the Whetstone mouse pad rather. Uh, <laughs> I just wish it was bigger because actually I think it's fantastic. I have no complaints. One of the fastest pads I've ever used. And yet I still get a lot of control over it because it has almost the properties of a cloth pad on your wrist. You can feel a slight texture. It's soft and yet super fast like a plastic pad. If it was bigger, I'd consider using it. But because of my lower sensitivity, even though it looks like I'm not moving my mouse a whole lot on my pad a lot of the time, sometimes I flick further and I'd like a bit more space. I don't want to have to think about the mouse pad size. But again, that's going to be very dependent to you. If you want something a little bit smaller and you're looking at plastic pads, I highly suggest you consider the Whetstone as a, an option. A great mouse pad, definitely. So yeah, I've been MVC here for the Scampro Gaming Tab. It's definitely a cheap and great gaming mouse if you can get on with it and the buttons don't cause you an issue. So don't entirely discount it, but just bear it in mind. I've been MVC. Enjoy, hope you've enjoyed it, and we'll catch you next time here on the Scan Pro Gaming Tab.